Well, the school of Senators, really grateful to have Wizzy Chetty chat with us today, um, head coach of Bishops Rugby. Fantastic school, fantastic brand of rugby. Wiz, great to chat to you. Thank you so much for your time. But we're going to start with your career. 100 caps for Aki Tigers. Um, that sets a great example of commitment and loyalty, don't you think? Yeah. Thanks. Firstly, thanks for having me, Ryan. Um, yeah, no, geez. Um, it was a natural progression for me from uh, leaving school yeah, in 2006 at Bishops and um, just uh, there was always such a good relationship between the, the, the school and the university and, and there's been so many old boys and, and from Ronda Wash Sachs, Weinberg um, that have gone across there and you know you just want to play with your friends and try and, and keep playing rugby at a fun level and then obviously the Varsity Cup came in and it amalgamated in something where that just snowballed, had a snowball effect. And, you know, we were efficiently becoming semi-professional rugby players um, at university level. And it was absolutely awesome. It was probably the best time of best time of my life, you know, playing um, playing varsity cup with my friends from school. You know, my, my childhood best mate, Marcel Brach, he plays for the, the Eagles, now the USA Eagles, you know, just getting to play with him for a couple of seasons. And then and, and, and Nick Groom and and many others. I mean, you know, we could rattle off plenty of names, but the reality is just playing with your best mates every week made it an easy thing to go through those preseason so many times. And and in between I've had a I've had short spells at at False Bay Rugby Club, which has also been fantastic, you know. I mean, I played off 70-odd games there as well for their first team. And it just also was a great dynamic. It was, you played UCT, you finished Varsity Cup, and then you were probably you went to another club. And the closest for us was False Bay, you know. And then, obviously, I went back off for a second stint at UCT, just finishing up stuff. And it was um, it was absolutely awesome because um, I got to play with some guys that I've coached at Bishops and and also um, I was involved in the coaching line at 20. So it's just a family environment for me personally, a, a tight family environment that I grew up in effectively. And um, I used to go watch UCT. I lived in the Newlands area. I used to go watch them when I was a little boy. Um, my brothers and my dad used to take me up there. So to go watch them, to play for them was a huge honor. Yeah, definitely. Well, Wesley, I think you, you've got it uh, summed up there brilliantly. So you've played school by rugby, you've played a varsity cup, you've played for Western Province, you still play a club rugby, you're getting stuck in. I think it's fair to call you a servant of the game, don't you think? Yeah, geez, I think um, there, there's so many of them out there. I think, you know, I've just been fortunate that maybe, you know, with varsity cup, we get televised so many, so much and... And, and obviously with the Gold Cup with False Bay and a bit of uh, Western Province stuff. But I think there's so many servants out there. You know, I think back to guys like Andre van Feeren, who coaches at Weinberg Boys. He's a teacher at Weinberg Boys High School. And he's got 200 odd plus games for False Bay first team, you know, and he's an sure. absolute, he's 37 years old, week in and week out. I scrum down next to him and he's um, <laughs> just an absolute legend of the game. And it's just guys like that, I think, you know, that make club rugby so special, you know. it's you know, We don't all... Well, everyone goes on to play professional rugby and, um, you know, it's it can be sometimes frowned upon and seen negatively, but it's not. It's an absolute honour to play next to such legends of the game. Um, for instance, I mean, three weeks ago, I played against Rudy Page and Davin Robenheimer to Springboks. So it's just an honour for us to share the field with them and to be able to uh, to enjoy it every week. Yeah, and if I could just jump in there and change the angle slightly, what you said, and I agree with you, Wesley, um, you know, playing against the likes of the guys that you mentioned, um, but rugby, and I'd say world rugby, seems to be doing something right in terms of just creating that, that feel-good factor about the game. Like, it's growing, and, and more and more people are taking an interest, and it's expanding. Um, what has world rugby done well to sort of incorporate that? Because it just, like you say, it's just, it's growing. More and more people are showing an interest, from my perspective. And at one stage, people were saying, oh, rugby's a dangerous game, wow. But things have, I think they've handled everything really, really well. What's what's growing the game? Um, I think more than ever, the, the the saying that I always always go with is that uh, rugby is the thugs game played by gentlemen, <laughs> and it's and it can't be more true. Um, uh, I mean, you look at the culture. You just watched the New Zealand Tonga game on Saturday, and you saw the emotion from the Tongan players after taking 102 play, points by the by the ABs and. Um, you see the difference and it means so much more to them. And I think for every rugby player, it's so special. As you get older, I think schoolboy, the, the rivalries are there. It's fantastic and it's a really important part of the game. But when you start playing club level, it's not, you don't have to play, you know, sports in, in, once you leave school. 
especially if you don't have the ambition to go on to be a professional rugby player. So the culture that world rugby has got at the moment is something that you that's second to none. I mean, you've seen the hype around the, the British and Irish Lions yeah. tour, and it's just something so, so special, something that comes around 12, uh, every 12 years to South Africa. And it's the same for, for any level of rugby. You know, it's, it's just such a special moment and camaraderie running around with your friends. And, and even if they're not your friends, you know, I mean, just people you might not even know. It might be a, a pick-up touch rugby game on a Sunday afternoon in the park, you know, and it's just something special about it. It's just sharing the moments, the, the enjoyment factor. And I think it's it's probably top of, the, top of the ranking at the moment. You know, the sport, a lot of teams have, you know, we've seen a lot of teams buy players and bring players in, and it does happen in rugby, so don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that, um, that the game hasn't been corrupted, in my opinion. It hasn't been Good gone point. to the... the yeah. The, the, you know sponsors have taken over and there's issues yeah a couple of teams here and there have some of their off-field issues but that comes with the game you know no absolutely you make a very good point there was i like that it's it's very very good but i'd say passion is, is something i'd say very much a part of who you are is that sort of your, your driving force just being passionate about the game yeah 100 mm -hmm. i had this discussion with my wife last night you know <laughs> we always talk about um about um my passion for Bishop's Rugby coaching, you know, I always tell the boys my first, my opening line, and I think they get bored of it in every preseason talk before we get going with things. I always tell them I don't coach for the, the paycheck. I coach what I believe, mm. you know, and, and that is my passion. I coach what I want to believe in and what I believe I've seen. And, I, and I, it's my passion and what I'm trying to portray through in, in the game plan, you know, and it's the same with my rugby, you know. If I lost my passion, I would have given up a long, long time ago. You know, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be going out to um, Tigerberg on a Saturday afternoon. And, and I'm not being disrespectful. I'm saying how difficult it is to go out to Tigerberg on a Saturday afternoon because you know you're going to have a hard game of rugby. Um, if I didn't have passion for the game, I wouldn't do that anymore. Uh, definitely. But it has been a steady growth for you. And how are you finding the role of being the first 15 head coach at Bishops? I'm, 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 I'm loving it. I think that, um, you know, it, it was uh, 2018 that I got the job and, you know, we've seen a, uh, we really went for, with a big culture shift in, in our rugby system at Bishop, okay. you know, Dave Mallett's okay. taking over as the director of rugby um, or head of rugby at Bishop's. And um, we had a, a plan which we sat down and we, we, we worked through and, and, you know, I think it's starting to shine, you know, I think, 2018 was a fantastic season. <clears throat> we we brought through guys like William Rose, Azar Wharton, you know, just to name a few, um, and um, uh, Liam Klusman. And um, <clears throat> those guys really were able to put us back where we needed to. I think we went through a couple of um, uh, lean, not lean, humble years where we, we know we, 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 we saw other teams really progressing and and, and going further and further in the game. And we've had to play a bit of catch up again. And, and that's what we've done, you know. And Dave, through his guidance as, as the master mm -hmm. in charge and director of rugby, we've been able to, to put things in place and, and put systems in place. You know, we, we, we try to bring a big emphasis here at Bishops is on the culture of the game and, and how things go. So we, we try and portray, remember the guys from yesteryear, but also remind the guys that they've got to write their own story. And that's yeah. going to be the next chapter of Bishop's Rugby. So, yeah, we've, 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 we've grown big time as coaching staff into the role. Yeah, I'm sure, Dave, but that's not scared to show you one or two tricks. I'm sure he's got lots of experience where it helps the game of rugby. He's, he's, he's dynamic, I'd say. It must be great working on you, sort of touched on it, but really just what he brings to the game just gives you that much more confidence, I'd say. Yes, and the, the great thing about Dave Mallett, and I can tell you now, is his ability to adjust. So you find a okay. lot of directors like your master's in charge. And Dave's, as you said, he's got this wealth of knowledge and experience, mm. but he's not afraid to learn and bring in new things. You know, a lot of directors will say, what worked here for me? Let's just copy and paste and it will work here. Dave isn't like that. Dave wants to know the new trends. You know, he's often sitting down last year before just before lockdown sitting down with the crusaders razor robinson having coffees and watch getting us down to their training sessions at the crusaders then he's sitting with the stormers trying to figure out what's happening there so as a director of rugby he's world class and he's just got a he understands i mean just to for him to have appointed me i was 32 at the time the youngest bishop's first team coach of all time and mm. just for him to take that leap or have that leap 
take the leap of faith in me and go, geez, where's you ready to do this job? Let's go, let's do this. Um, just shows how he's keen on new, exciting things all the time. No, that's excellent, excellent. And, you know, you touched earlier on how the game has changed and you guys went through a bit of a rough patch. But obviously also, it's such a competitive league and I discussed it a number of guys, but I think every school's got a different approach to how they handle that pressure. You know, everyone wants to win. Um, how do you guys go, well, how do you absorb with that pressure, especially in the league that you play in? No, toughest, uh, toughest league in school boy rugby, mm. but, um, you know, the pressure, you know, it's such a, it's such an interesting thing because these guys, they've met, playing for bishops is the be all and end all for a lot of them. You know, they want, that is their, their, their absolute goal. And I try to convince them that it's not, that a lot of them are going to go on and play as we've seen, play at top level. But, to tell an 18 year old, 17 year old, that is, is difficult, you know, but um, they, they, they take it on really well. You know, we want to play, we want to enjoy ourselves, we want to express ourselves and the pressure, the pressure is always going to be there. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be tougher and tougher, you know, when, when a, poor, when a, when a, a team has a poor season, um, they often pull the next year, you know, like say, they don't, it doesn't often happen, but a Paul boys, for instance, they could have a poor season and you know the next, you actually, you worry when they have a bad season because you know they're going to come back even better the next year. And that's very, yeah. it's very rare that that happens. But, you know, for us here in the southern suburbs, I think Weinberg, Sachs, Ronda Bosch, and of course us at Bishops here, we just want to enjoy ourselves. So we play, as we, as I've said, the toughest league. There is no easy game either anymore. And, you know, even playing in the B, when we play what down a, a league, we have two games a year where we play two B, B so-called B league teams. I mean, Stellenberg, how, they're not a B league team. Let's be realistic. I think the B league is, is, decided about how many how low your teams go in the age group say if you have an a b c d that if you only have a and b then you're in the b league but right. let's be realistic they're probably one of the top teams they beat us in 2019 and they're, they're a quality side could very mm. well coach with a great program so there are no easy games anymore you know we we can be out a test match and we play seven 18 matches over i mean the first mm. we have a mid break but i mean we play 10 matches in 10 weeks initially out the block. So it's like playing a super rugby competition. You know, it's, it's tough on the kids' bodies and and the depth is tested. And that's effectively what we're trying to improve here is on our depth. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's end-to-end stuff. It's really, really excellent and exciting. But you always see, um, before the season got called off, you guys had two great wins and it was a really impressive win against Paul Russo, I don't want to. I don't want to know all your secrets, but maybe some yeah. insight as to how you guys got over the line against Paul Russo because that was that was an exceptional performance, I believe, from the first fifteen. No, well, we've been we've been building for a long time, um, and you know we, you know, the week before we, I will be lying, and again, I'm not disrespecting any teams in the league. I'd be lying if we, we were to say we were disappointed. We the 29-20 win against Sachs, We thought we were better than that. We made a lot of mistakes on the day. That um, that cost us a couple of points, and um, Sachs really played really well on the day as well. And I think um, we were just uh, really convinced in the build up to the poorest week that that we were we had be- we we made ourselves believe that we 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 are a really good team, and they are a really good team, you know, and um, and we believed it, and we just worked really hard on our fundamentals that week. I mean, our, our coaching staff in Senna Estes and then Dylan Freiling put in exceptional work with the forwards around set piece time, um, line outs and scrums in Senna, and then uh, Dylan Freiling with the backs working, knowing that we were going to have wet conditions. We had the buckets out with soap and water, sticking the balls in there, training with the wet ball because it was a beautiful all week, all week in the build up, and then it poured on the Saturday. And sure. um, it was just the, it was just the culmination of a lot of hard work going into it. The boys believing in a system and believing in their own abilities and backing their own abilities and and executing it. You know, we I often get grief because you, you see me if we're on TV play, and I've got the walkie-talkie. I bet I bet my and my funny enough that my close friend Doc Uber's on the other end and my wife on the other end of the walkie-talkie as they're our medical side. And they, um, they'll they tell you that I barely speak into it because I want the boys to express themselves. You know, yeah, they're true. there to think on their 
and to beat. I can't make decisions out there. I can give it. I could possibly give some uh, technical advice, maybe about our high tech breakdown time or our, our tackling, getting too high in the tackles. Just, just remind them. But Johnny, as the as the captain and the fly off, he calls everything, and he called it excellently on the day. You know, he was like a he really dictated play, and we've blessed to have such good young talented men like that. I mean, this team. And I've coached very good Bishops teams here, but this team is one of their, their, their strengths is that they're exceptionally academic off the field. So okay. you, look at, you look at the team and we're talking, I would say 95% of the team are, are sitting on B or A aggregates sure. and they're going to walk into university next year which is great. And they're thinkers and they can just move on their feet. So they don't require a lot from me. You know, we put in, I always say most of the work we do is on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. And then after Thursday, we watch them do the rest. So yeah, it was a good performance and just well executed. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, we see. It was good stuff. And I wish I could see you guys play a bit more rugby, man. But anyway, it is what it is. That's it. Work with the punches. But one thing I find interesting is, is the brand of rugby bishops plays. And it's, you guys are known for running rugby. So when it was implemented that it's non-contact for you guys in terms of training for the COVID, I think you had about a four-week period to get ready for the season. That would have been like almost bread and butter for you because because that's how you guys play rugby. You run the ball. It's it's interesting. I don't know. Maybe I've misread it there, but I thought it actually would have played in your hands quite nicely as well. Yeah, we will. We we um we're a team that we do. The boys will tell you a ton of contact in the week because you know. I always say, um, you know, if it's a game of, if it was a shadow World Cup, we'd always be the world champions because that's we we most beautiful team to watch and training. We every bishop's player can pass off both hands. And they all have wonderful skills because it's it's inbred in them from growing up from grade one with Brendan Fogarty at the prep school at the rugby and their rugby program. They they are taught and gonna use at wet pups. They're taught to pass and have these amazing skills, look for space, mm. offload in the contact, you know, put, the ball moves faster than, than, the, than the feet. Those are all things that are, that, that, that are indoctrined in them, basically. They, they know that that's part of their DNA. So we do a ton of contact work here. Yeah? And we were actually deep. We were so keen to get back to the contact work because that's an area where that was probably against Paul Rose where we dominated and something that we worked on hard. So the boys, we, we just got on with things as normal when we were got that four week period where we couldn't do anything, you know, because it was just, you know, lots of shadow work, lots of work with um, with our systems, putting in our, our structures in place, a lot of skill work, which the boys thrive on. And then when it came to that four weeks where we were allowed to do contact, we just ramped up the level slightly, obviously under close supervision by our medical, our medical yeah. staff. Yeah. And um, we were able to ramp up the, the, the contact, which the boys actually enjoyed because we always we we take our um, our um, our lessons from the the the, the chiefs. I I was fortunate enough to spend a bit of time with the Waikato chiefs a couple of years ago when they were here. And what interested me big time was the fact that they were doing uh, live contact on a Thursday. So what happened was they had trained all week quite hard, and then they had an open session on the Thursday before before playing the Stormers. Um, with a club side from Cape Town. So, so they had False Bay come out to do a live contact session against them. They knew nothing about the False Bay players. They had all these stars, Sonny Bull, Williams, Liam Messam, and they did a full contact, almost match for 25 minutes. And it was just an interesting thing sure. that they believe that they should be doing it up until mm -hmm. a Thursday. So uh, we don't necessarily do that because if we pick up an injury, mm -hmm. you know, our depth is tested best of time so if we pick up an injury it's an issue for us but we like to try and do as much contact as pos possible just to keep the body prepped you know we, we always we always tell the boys yeah you don't when you write when you're studying for a maths exam you don't just uh you don't just work out of the textbook you go do past papers past exam papers so we need to test ourselves by doing contact and prepping our body like that for what's going to come on the saturday so we work quite hard on that in the week no, nah, very, very good, Wes. Yo, that's interesting, yeah. A lot of detail there, and it's great how you guys go through everything to make sure the guys are well prepared. Awesome stuff. But running rugby, it'll never get old, will it? Uh, never. Yeah. Never, ever, ever. You know, we, um, we, it's just, it's, it's, it's beautiful to watch. I mean, you watch that um, Bristol, I mean, sorry, not Bristol, the Harlequins against um, Exeter. Exeter, yeah. It was just a great, great 
game of rugby, plenty of offloading, playing into the space. And we saw, I actually tweeted about it on Friday, you saw Peter Steff use it fantastically on Friday. I thought he was exceptional for the Springboks and running into space, moving the ball in contact, uh, just a great to watch running rugby. And Bishops will never, ever move away from that ethos. It's something that's, in, in as I said, it's, it's in the boys. It's just part of their DNA. Um, they will want to want to always pop, uh, run the ball. And yes, with that comes responsibility. It's making sure that the pack gets us on the front foot of set piece because you can't play riding rugby if you're going backwards. If your line out's not functioning, if your scrum's not functioning, if you can't win your breakdown, you can't play that type of rugby. So we put a big emphasis on those on those areas or if you're not fit enough, so we run a ton, as the boys will tell you. Um, but at the same time, it's also about making smart decisions. So we, we yeah. push hard for running as I always say, but the biggest issue around that is that that can sometimes come back to bite you. So we we put a massive emphasis on decision making. You know, we want to have a crack from our in goal area. I mean, the boys will tell you we practice having a run from deep from our in goal. If it's on, it's on. You know, we always we always say that if it's on, you got to play what's in front of you. So we'll have a go. But making smart decisions. There's nothing wrong with kicking the rugby ball. You know. Put, getting giving your pack a bit of a chance to breathe or an attacking kick. Some sure you would have seen in, in, in quite a few of our games. We love cross kicking and mm. and and using the kick as an option or a contestable as we call it. So we kick we kick it to get it back. That's always our our goal. If we're going to kick it, we want to get the ball back. But um, our running rugby brand will always stay. It's never going to die. It's just something beautiful to watch. And we've been watching it since from the eighties with Basil Bay at Bishops um, to Andre Jakob to Dave Mallet. And, and it's never changed. You know, the brand has never, ever changed and it will never, I will never change it. And the, the, the person who takes over after me will never change it. It's not possible. <laughs> you know? So um, you could bring in the most uh, conservative uh rugby coach in the world yeah and he's not going to change the minds of these boys to have a go i can tell you what it gives me uh, the, the, the little hair i have it gives me <laughs> a couple more points <laughs> yeah it's, it's excellent running rugby bishops is known for it it's awesome yeah talk about culture it's totally ingrained so that's good it's really really good but um i have a pronounce this correctly now sasha in gomazulu i think i pronounced yes, it correct yeah. he was picked for the sa under 20 squad um, and how impressed were you with his time at Bishops? Oh, jeez. When I say talented, uh, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm being very uh, nice in terms of that I haven't, I haven't, you can't explain how talented he is. Sure. Um, he is one of the most gifted rugby players you will ever come across. And, and we talk about the, the, the gifts he has. It's something that he works on incredibly. So he, I'd put him up there and I actually, people give me a lot of grief and I'm actually so biased about it. But when I speak about it, it's because I'm just that passionate about it. He will be the next Stormers fly half and he will lead Western Province into the next, into the next decade. And we'll, they'll win plenty of, of trophies off his boots and his back because he's just that good. And he's a player, he's on that Tiger Woods level where his talent is, 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 is unreal but he works incredibly hard. So you have to pull him off of the field. You have to pull him out of the gym, beg him not to fly into contact and try and tackle the, the, the loose head and tight dead props when they're carrying the pods. You know, he's just <laughs> got this mindset of a champion. You know, I'm being serious. He's, I mean, he's got this absolute mindset of a champion where he's able to go out there and, and I always use the Michael Jordan terminology with him. So, you know, um, Michael Jordan's coach says it about him, and it's the same with Sash. You know, he's got this, he's got this ability to turn it on. He can turn it on and off his game, but he never turns it off. He's just sure. unreal. So when he steps out there, it's the creativity from the cross kicks, you know, from the ability to put players away. To with his, he's got an exceptional pass of both hands, or he wants to play flat on that vantage line and take it to the line himself, you know. So it's so difficult for teams to defend him, and when he wants to get back in the pocket and just kick it, you know, he can put it on uh, on a coin anywhere on the field. You know, you could put markers down and he'll just pin corners. So he's just a complete player, you know, and he's got such great um, such a great mindset around the gym. He understands and mm -hmm. and and the physical aspect. He understands that he's not going to just it can't you can't just rely on natural talent. 
because the players nowadays, you need to be physically up there. So he worked really hard on those weaker aspects of his, which is obviously getting, the, for most people, it's getting the gym, lifting weights, and that's most rugby players' problem, you know, in terms of they probably physically sometimes come short. For him, it's an issue where he's getting better all the time. I mean, we saw in 2019 his ability as a as a 16-year-old um, turning 17, as a grade 11, and he was just unreal you know he turned games for us won games for us and then we were obviously robbed obviously last year of not of seeing him play which was really unlucky obviously but it was for lots of players across the country um mm. i think i think he matured more last year because it took more discipline from him having knowing that he was going to sign for western province at it, he was going to sign for Western Province. He knew this in grade 11 already. And knowing that he was going to sign and not having a season, it took more discipline in preparation because it meant more hours on the training park, more hours in the gym and not playing any matches. Excuse me. And um, it took so much discipline for him just to keep going, keep going. There wasn't an afternoon I wouldn't drive into the school yet to get to the office and I wouldn't see him out there kicking or having the cones and practice he's kicking his brother coming out standing behind the poles catching for him while sure, he's kicking, sure, sure. kicking the ball back. it just doesn't stop you know so um for me it's a it's a no-brainer and it's not it's not a matter of if he's going to be a, a star it's it's just when you know <laughs> well that was that was brilliant Wes. um yeah and big believe in hard work hard work always pays off and if that's yes. what he's been doing well then there we go he deserves it fully yes. fully deserves yes. it excellent but it's almost like as well, um, the program that you guys have in place almost guarantees the guys are going to play rugby after school. I mean, there's a heap of names of guys that have come from bishops that are playing rugby after school professionally. Um, you guys have to give yourself some credit for the program that you run. <laughs> no, geez, we, we always, it's a combined effort, you know, Flip, mm. um, Ryan, you know, this, this, as I said, I've got a great coaching staff, you know, I mean, the pack, just this year alone, you've got guys like Ali Bruce and Chris Pertheway coming through, our coaching staff in Senna, he stays in the forwards, you know, he's he's working with these guys on just the, the, the nitty gritty, the detail that they need to become, to become, um, to become pro players and Dill Freiling with the back line. You know, he's played for the Stormers himself, so he knows what it takes to get there. So he's giving them the best knowledge and experience from up there and bringing it down to them you know and then i talk about again i'll talk about our prep school and 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 brendan fogarty and the role they play down there in that these guys come to us we can't take all all the credit because i know plenty of schoolboy rugby coaches will come would do anything to have a loose head and tight prop come, come into their their open uh, rugby side and be able to pass off both hands for instance or offload with one hand and that stuff that's brought they brought up they taught from a young age so we we're able to just put the detail together and as you just said you know hard work works you know mm. putting your head down getting in the gym getting stuck in knowing that nothing is given for free you know no, no one's going to give you anything you know that's the message we often give across them it doesn't matter where you're from. You could have money. You could have no money. You could be tall. You could be short. You could be big. You could be small. If you do the hard work, that's going to pay off. That's going to give you, ultimately, that's going to be what, what separates you from the guy the guy next to you. And it's going to be the detail that gets you on. I mean, there's a guy here, Suleiman Hartzenberg, this year, who is going to go, and again, in the same, in the same, at the same level as, as Sasha. He's going to go on and be a professional rugby player. Mm. There's no doubt about it. And, um, th and the hard work he puts in on his body from his medical. So he knows he's got, he's got um, some things he needs to work on in terms of his, his body and heart functions. So he, he's, there's not a day gone by that he's not in the physio room working on his rehab on those things or he's in the gym working on his weak areas. You know, he knows he runs the 100 in 11, 11 seconds. So he's working on this fast twitch, you know, when he knows... He's got, he would like to improve his pass. So he's working on his pass. So it's just that hard work, working on the detail, the small things. You know, we, we've got some, I, I'm probably the guy with the biggest cliches, but, you know, we always say, you know, you, 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 you take care of the small things, the big things take care of themselves, yeah. you know. So no, right, 100%. And if we can get that right, they'll, everything else takes care of, or takes care of itself. No, excellent. <laughs> Great program. Excellent, excellent stuff, Wes. As we sort of draw towards an end now, looking ahead, and I guess it's time to start planning for 2022, isn't it? Yeah, cheapers. We know we, we, 
as we finish the first pre as we finish the preseason for 2021 we always start prepping for 2022 you know my co the coaches around me get so excited and we've been chatting Senna and myself quite often about it and and um the team for next year you know we obviously we're really hoping that we get back to rugby as soon as possible and i do believe that we'll still play rugby this year which is, is which okay. is fantastic um, and obviously pre prepping for 2022 you know it's such a it's such a privilege and an honor to be at a great school like bishops where we can we have the resources like the gyms and the facilities and then the, the peripheral coaches who are able to come in and, and assist and um we've we've just got to make the most of it these boys need to take it in and absorb everything that they can from them and and just really know that they're getting better day in and day out. It's not just by showing up doesn't mean that you're going to get better. It means that you've got to put your head down, work really hard, make sure your academics is up to, up to standard and, mm -hmm. and, and live by the culture. You know, we, we, we change it up all the time and we have different themes every year. And, um, and for, 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 for instance, this year, our, our theme is it's side before self. And, you know, I, re I really do believe that, you know, and next year will be a different team motto. And I really do believe that if you put the side, the team first, you're going to be fine. You know, team, uh, people are going to notice you and players are going to come through and they're going to develop and they're going to get better. But you have to put the side first before yourself. And these guys, they're, they're really doing it. And we're running a great program. And next year will be a really good side as well. Next year, we're going to be a, a top team. You know, everyone's been saying, you know, 20, 2020, great team. 2021, you had a great team and, you know, COVID. But 2022 is going to be a really good team as well. So it's 23, 23 and 2024. If they apply themselves, they stick to the detail, they do what they need to do, the players, they listen to the great people they have around them. And, you know, it's going to, the rest will take care of itself. Yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds like great continuation. And like we mentioned earlier, obviously a very good program in place and the guys are buying into it, which is so, so important. So Wes, excellent. You guys, I think, are set for great things. Um, and the past has shown that Bishops produces great rugby players and it looks like the future is going to continue just that way. So it's, it's awesome. Really, really great. Well done, Wes. Keep up the excellent work, my man. Thank you so much, Ryan. And thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it's been great. Lekker, Wes. Thank you so much. Awesome.